Have you heard about the magnificent Grand Canyon? It's not just any canyon. It's one of the most famous natural wonders in the entire world, attracting millions of tourists each year. But hold on to your hats because I've got an astonishing story for you. Picture this. A man recently made a mind-boggling discovery at the Grand Canyon that has sent shockwaves around the world. Now this isn't some run-of-the-mill conspiracy theory or a tall tale spun out of thin air. No, my friend, this bone-chilling truth will make your blood run cold. Scientists and experts who have heard about this discovery are in a state of shock themselves, and they now fear the worst for the Grand Canyon and the surrounding areas. Get ready because what's about to be revealed is nothing short of an earth-shattering revelation that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew about this iconic landmark. Welcome to Revel Discovery, your portal to a world of fascinating discoveries and awe-inspiring insights that will expand your understanding of the universe and beyond. Let's delve into the fascinating history of the Grand Canyon. This enormous and awe-inspiring natural wonder is situated in northern Arizona, a sight to behold. Believe it or not, back in 1908, it was officially designated a national monument by none other than Theodore Roosevelt the President of the United States at the time. But here's something intriguing. While there is evidence of Native American habitation in the region dating back to the 13th century, it wasn't until 1540 that European explorers, led by Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, stumbled upon the canyon. That's right. It took several more centuries before people from North America began to explore the depths of this majestic wonder. Fast forward to 1869 when an adventurous geologist named John Wesley Powell led a daring expedition with a team of 10 men. Their mission? To navigate the treacherous rapids of the Colorado River and traverse the entire 277-mile-long gorge in just four rowboats. It was a groundbreaking and perilous adventure that had never been attempted before. Powell's expedition was the first of its kind and opened the doors for further exploration of the Grand Canyon. As the 19th century drew to a close, the Grand Canyon was already receiving tens of thousands of visitors each year. Now here's where our story takes an interesting turn. Theodore Roosevelt, who became the 26th and 27th President of the United States after President William McKinley's assassination in 1901, had a deep love for the western region of the country. In fact, he held a special place in his heart for the natural wonders that dotted this vast landscape. When he assumed the presidency, he wasted no time in making environmental protection a top priority for his administration. After establishing the National Wildlife Refuge to safeguard the country's animals, fish, and birds, Roosevelt set his sights on the regulation of public lands. It's important to note that, at that time, only Congress had the power to designate an area as a national park. This meant that private development and such land was strictly prohibited. However, Roosevelt devised a clever workaround to reduce bureaucratic red tape. He started a new practice by designating some of the West's most remarkable treasures as national monuments. While not the same as national parks, these designations provided protection against private development and ensured the preservation of these natural wonders. In January 1908, Roosevelt put this practice to good use when he designated over 800,000 acres of the Grand Canyon's surrounding area as a national monument. He believed that this awe-inspiring wonder of nature should be allowed to remain in its current state, not to be tampered with or improved upon. Instead, it should be preserved for future generations to behold and appreciate. Roosevelt famously stated that the Grand Canyon was a sight every American should see. He urged people to preserve it not only for their own children, but for the children of their children, as a testament to the magnificence of the American landscape. However, it wasn't until 1919 when President Woodrow Wilson signed the Grand Canyon National Park Act into law that private development within the Grand Canyon was explicitly declared illegal by Congress. From that point onward, the Grand Canyon was officially recognized as a national park a designation that solidified its protected status. Since then, the number of visitors to the Grand Canyon has grown exponentially, with over 5 million people making the pilgrimage each year. Visitors to the Grand Canyon can embark on various adventures, from exploring the canyon floor on foot or by mule to navigating its rapids by boat. Activities like whitewater rafting, hiking, and jogging have become popular among visitors. 
Of course, not everyone is up for an adrenaline-pumping adventure. Many people simply prefer to stand on the south rim of the canyon, around 7,000 feet above sea level, and marvel at the breathtaking view. It's a panorama that has remained virtually unchanged for over 400 years, a testament to the enduring beauty of this natural wonder. Now let's shift our focus to the mysterious article from 1909 that discusses the Grand Canyon. It's worth mentioning that some authors, professors, and even the Smithsonian Institution dismiss it as nothing more than sensational yellow journalism. They argue that the article lacks credibility and was likely fabricated to capitalize on people's beliefs and spiritual needs. According to them, it's either an unlikely story at best or a dishonest attempt to spread tall tales and make a quick buck at worst. They emphasize that there has been a follow-up article, and the mysterious author of the piece did a disservice to both believers and skeptics alike. Interestingly, over a century later, the Smithsonian Institution still refuses to confirm the existence of the individuals mentioned in the article, such as Kincaid and Professor Jordan. Moreover, the article only appeared in the Arizona Gazette and doesn't appear in any other official records. This has led to skepticism and disbelief from the academic establishment, which tends to follow the established party line. However, alternative researchers online take a different stance. They believe that there might be some truth to the article's claims. They argue that there is a forbidden zone within the Grand Canyon National Park where hiking, camping, and exploration are strictly prohibited. They view this as the tip of the iceberg, a small piece of a much larger conspiracy that involves underground reptilian overlords who control the governing elite. These researchers suggest that the federal government secretly monitors the supposedly restricted area, pointing to the odd place names in that region as evidence. On the other hand, there are more radical alternative groups that see the Grand Canyon article as merely the beginning of a vast conspiracy. For them, it extends far beyond the confines of the canyon itself, encompassing hidden agendas and clandestine operations. They believe that the government, with its supposed conflict of interest, manipulates the official story of human history. In this ongoing debate, this skeptical view holds the upper hand, backed by thick walls of authority and plausibility. A single newspaper article published over a century ago finds it difficult to penetrate these defenses. However, an objective researcher must always approach such claims with a healthy dose of skepticism. While it's reasonable to question a newspaper article from the past and an unknown author, it would also be unwise to blindly accept the official narrative provided by a government agency that undoubtedly has a conflict of interest in shaping the historical account. It's important to recognize that the United States government has, at times, manipulated historical narratives to promote certain agendas. The promotion of native cultures during the early 20th century is one such example. Therefore, in seeking the truth, we must exercise objective thinking, let go of preconceived notions, and follow the winds of evidence while avoiding the rocks and sandbars of confirmation bias. Evaluating claims based on their logical reasoning and the available evidence is the key to unraveling any riddle, including the mystery surrounding the Grand Canyon's prohibited area and the rule of law. As we continue to explore and question the various narratives surrounding the Grand Canyon, it's crucial to approach the topic with an open mind, considering different perspectives and remaining receptive to new information. While the truth about the claims made in 1909 article may never be definitively proven, engaging in critical thinking and robust research can lead us closer to a more comprehensive understanding of this extraordinary natural wonder and its enigmatic history. So there you have it, a deep dive into the fascinating tale of the Grand Canyon, from its historical significance to the controversies and mysteries that surround it. Keep your sense of curiosity alive, and let's continue our quest for knowledge and discovery. What is your take on the claims made in the 1909 article about the Grand Canyon? Do you believe it to be a sensational hoax, as some skeptics argue, or do you think there might be some truth to the story, as alternative researchers suggest? Engage with us by leaving a comment, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the notification bell for regular updates. Keep watching, stay inspired, and get ready for more exciting discoveries. See you in our next episode.